go. Well. Another Sunday. I'm doing some more work on uh, the, the project. <laughs> the project of the year, I guess. Uh, glowing telegram. Uh, starting a little earlier just because uh, I was sitting here looking at the project anyway. I was like, why don't I just start streaming sooner? Yeah, so what are we actually doing now? So a bunch of things. I have been doing some work uh, since the last stream in a few different directions. I'm sure this one's in progress too, there we go. Um, so what we were like, blah, 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 blah. What, we were, what we were working on last Sunday was to do with uploading uh, episodes to YouTube. Uh, working in the uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Uh, oh, right, I'm on the wrong branch. Hold on. Uh, number six, maybe? There we go. YouTube Upload API. And let's see here. Let's take a look at pull requests. Here we go. So we were working on this pull request. Add episode render media selection upload to YouTube. And then... There was something that I was working on that was based off of this branch. Ah, this one. Add filters and bolt scan for clips. So this is a bit of a convenience item for me to be able to filter uh, and to be able to do bulk. Pro okay, so it's not Good, 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 good. Okay, so this is something that is not needed to complete this item. Okay. Uh, let's see, I don't need this tab. Okay. So basically ob the objective of this item here, well, we have these ch things ch checked off because we wanted to be able to link the episode record or have a link in the episode record in the application and in the database to where the file is that we want to upload. And then we want to have an API that the, the front end would be able to call to trigger the upload. Although we've, we're not from app list page. So I guess technically this, this ticket will include, uh, yeah, let me, let me do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the description from here. We're going to go over to the PR. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Good, good, good. So can upload videos. Um, I didn't quite get that working on the stream last time, but most, most of the way there after link leaking API credentials. All right. And so one thing I did do, uh, after the last stream, actually I was working on this yesterday. I was like, well, I could, uh, maybe it was brainless or maybe it was someone else supplied a link to a thing about um, making a new type to wrap a secret. And I was like, okay, yeah, I could do that. And, you know, implement the, the, the um, debug trait for it and do all of those things. I was like, maybe there's a crate already for that. And I found this um, redact uh, crate on, uh, creates the IO. And so I'm using that. It has a secret. <laughs> it has a secret, yeah. Uh, it, it has this this uh, struct that holds uh, some type T, right? In this case, a string. And it has a thing. Oh, there's a from. What's the difference? Okay, it uses into. I see. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm just using new. Uh, where I'm using this. And then um, what you do is you call expose secret when you uh, actually need to have the secret. 
So that means that, like, when, because, like, this app state has the debug trait on it, so that logging can show what's in the app state, um, the YouTube client secret will not get logged. It's, uh, it's not logged as part of the secret. So I went through uh, a bunch of things that had, like, secrets um, for this and for the Twitch API as well. And I added those in and then updated every everything that used this to then also do the right thing. So like when we're when we're reading this elsewhere, when we need to pass it to an API call, we call dot expose secret. Um, and then the thing that we're passing around the auth tokens also now that type is secret of string like that access token is a secret of string uh, so just like a, a bit of a refactor right so the the nice thing here was what's great about types is we can change <laughs> change the interface change the types that we're using and then we get a bunch of errors that like show us where we need to track down uh, those things so anyway that's what happened yesterday <laughs> Um, after the stream last Sunday, I did, there were a couple of bits and pieces, uh, that I had to do. I don't remember exactly what, but, uh, it's all in the commit history on, on the PR to get this to work. Uh, and let's, let's hide all of the utility functions here. Get token. Sure. And again, at some point, um, I could probably go look for an OAuth to create or abstract some of the stuff here because there's a lot of uh, duplication between this and the uh, Twitch API one um, uh, library module service. Yeah, all of those things. Uh, I think maybe the stuff that I did after the stream was to do with implementing the rest of the login path. I did go into the UI. All right, this version doesn't have the dark mode. Um, I did go into the UI and added the login with YouTube button. I think that, that happened after the stream. That exercises this path to uh, go through the OAuth uh, process. <laughs> Sending, you know, you, you click here and it takes you to uh, the Google API stuff to log in and verify grant permissions. Uh, shouldn't have to do that from this point on locally because I have now the refresh token uh, stored. So things should just kind of work otherwise. And again, things that. Um, probably could be reused, so I have a uh, Axum um, uh, what should I call it? A thing that allows us to uh, uh, an ext is it an extractor? I forget what it's called, but basically a thing where we can define in a handler uh, well, not these handlers, but some other handlers that we want an access token and it extracts it out of the request by using this code, which basically just talks to Redis. Anyway, I don't think any of that is really new. We had the same thing for our uh, Twitch API, which I guess was my point is that there's more duplication here. Um, but we do have, here is our upload handler, right? So here's where we are. Uh, <laughs> doing the minimal amount of work to uh, upload our file. Uh, are we actually uploading the file? Uh, I think we are, yes. So we are, we're trying to read the path and we have the upload URL from the response. And then we do a put to the, that URL so this doesn't handle the case where this fails because there's supposed to be different cases where if the request fails, we can retry the upload uh, and resume the upload. 
uh, somewhere I actually have a tab uh, about resumable uploads. Let's see if I can not leak, link, uh, leak credentials today. Uh, it's not that one. Maybe I closed it. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, a via resource. Just looking for something that's going to tell me how I can. Ah, downside of starting the stream early is that my phone is not on silent until 20 minutes from now, anyway. Uh, this is fun, right? API documentation. <laughs> mm. Let's see. That's the page I was looking for. So this was what I intended to do, hence why can recover an upload error and resume upload is something that was on the uh, on the checklist. And then we need to do the UI stuff. So I think, well, we're already here. Maybe we can figure out how to do the uh, recovering an upload. So. Yeah, we do a put to the upload URL. Size of the file you're uploading, this should be the same value as the value of the X upload content link uh, HTTP request in step one. Hmm. Which it should be. Content length, right? So here we okay. So this path, okay. So we calculate the path here. Is this the same path we're using tonight? Good. Okay. So we don't bother opening the file initially. We just get the size, and then we do the first part that basically sends all the metadata about the video. And then if that fails, we just give up. <laughs> we throw a five hundred. 500 error uh, with some tracing and then then we open the file uh, and we upload it attempts to open a file and read only mode uh, so this I think seems to work and then Basically, this is the part that we need to, to implement now is how we're doing error handling. Okay, so there's uh, three possibilities here, right? Either the upload was successful, in which case we're done, or it did not succeed, but can be resumed. Um, so I, I know I highlighted this here, but part of this is actually inside of this case, right? If so, the why we would get an error here is if there was like a network interruption. So part of the second case where it did not succeed, but can be resumed this part here, it would result in this, this, this case here. Um, and then this case of it being successful is essentially what happens if we get to here currently. We're gonna have to rework some of this. The other case here is that the API response specifies any of these 500 
response codes to 500, 502, 503, 504. And then we need to do exponential back off and try the upload again. But we need to do that in a specific way where we check the upload status and resume the upload. Each resumable session URI has a finite lifetime and eventually expires. Okay. The other, the third case is that it failed permanently. So some non 200 response code that is not one of these four and we'll, we'll just treat the 404 case as a, a failed upload. We'll require the user to go into the UI and trigger a new upload if that should happen. So that is kind of how we need to break out. That's how we need to detect what's going on here and choose what to do. And what I'm imagining is that we'll take um, this bit here, extract that into a function that will take the upload, like the these details, and we'll return one of three cases. Uh, does that does that make sense? Maybe, maybe that that will make sense. We need to. I need to read the, the remaining, uh, check the upload status and resuming and upload parts to understand, like what we need to do based on what happens. But you can imagine. Okay, we call the API, and then the response is going to be either it was successful, it is a transitory or temporary failure, or is a permanent failure. And so we could have a function that returns, you know, one of three values from like an enum or something uh, that indicated that. And then based on that, we could call the function again. Now the question is. If, if if we just did that, like that was the API, right? We'll call the function again. What other information do we need to pass to actually resume the upload? Is that, that is on this page, yeah? Yeah, good. So uh, check the status of an upload. To so check the status of an interrupted resumable upload, send an empty put request to the upload URL that you retrieved in step two and also used in step three. In your request, set the content range header values to bytes, space, star, slash, content length. Where content length is the size of the file you're uploading. Okay. Step 4.2, process the API response. If the upload already completed, regardless of whether it succeeded or failed, the API will return the same response that it sent when the upload originally completed. If it was interrupted or it's still in progress, the API will have a 308 resume incomplete response code. Okay. So maybe we need two functions. One for kind of the initial case and one for a resume case. How would the parameters of those functions be different? I don't think they would be, right? Because it's knowing that we are resuming that tells us we need to make these extra steps. Huh. Oh, well. um, in the response, the range header specifies how many bytes of the file have already been successfully uploaded. It's indexed from zero. Okay, and the range header, it's a range. So 0 to 999, 999 indicates the first 1 million bytes of the file have been uploaded. If nothing has been uploaded yet, the uh, it won't include the range header. Okay. If the API response also includes retry after a header, use the header's value to determine when to attempt to resume the upload. So this, this basically tells us how much has already been uploaded, and then we can resume the upload. To resume the upload, send another put request. Uh, set the request body to the binary code for the portion of the video file that is yet to be uploaded. So we're gonna we're gonna read that file. So here's a question: This file handle that we are using to upload. 
um, this here. Is this is this a one shot? How did how does this file handle work? Like if we consume it, is that then do we have to make a new one? Okay, so this is a reference to an open file. Do I need to make? Should I make the text bigger? <laughs> let's 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 make it a little bit bigger. I know after after the stream, I usually shrink the text size back down. Here we go. Uh, a reference to an open file on the file system. This is a specialized version of STD file uh, FS file, right? So this is from uh, Tokyo for like async stuff. That seemed when I was thinking about doing this, that seemed like the thing to do, given we're using like Tokyo async stuff elsewhere. Hey, uh, Nate, how's it going? Yeah, I saw I saw your status on Discord that you were playing some Fortnite. You you playing with uh, in-laws? So, uh, I've I've played a couple of games of Fortnite, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> so many other things to do, so much code to write. So an instance of a file can be read or written depending on what options it was open with. Okay, files also implement async sync to alter the logical cursor that the file was internally. Okay, so we can seek. Right, so if we if we want to resume the upload, we need to skip to where we want to resume from. So Vals can also implement async sync. Async seek. A file will not be cl closed immediately when it goes out of scope. If there are any I/O operations, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. reading and writing to a file is usually done with the convenience methods on async read ext and okay. Examples. Create, write all, read the contents of. Okay, ample file. So this is what we called, we called open with a path. So uh, other areas may be returned according to open options open. What is open options? Uh, no, that's maybe one too far. Something about whether it's read or write, maybe. New open. Okay. Write, create. Okay, I don't care about any of that. I think. So it's not clear to me how this is going to work in terms of like once we have this file, will be will we be able to seek to a location? And the other thing I'm wondering is, will it make sense to have two functions? One for kind of the initial case and one for the resume case. Or we could make one function that is figure out what we need to upload. <laughs> that is the uh, basically the bit that this is describing, right? Where we get the uh, status of the upload. And we figure out what the where we how how far into the file we need to skip. Have that separate, and then have just a, a function that essentially does this bit. That will mean that the logic will be we initially call the upload function. Let's call it. If it gets us a response back that says, oh, temporary failure, then we call the second function, the status function, uh, to figure out where we need to resume from. 
if it can. And then it's going to either say, here's where you can resume from, or it's gonna say, no, you can't. If it does say where we can resume from, we call back the upload function. And that means we can have one function that will, ooh, maybe it doesn't even need to know. Right, so when we resume the upload, oh, we still need content range and content length. Because right now what we're doing for content, no, 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 we, we're not, we're not explicitly setting the content length because that's being derived from what's remaining in file, I think, or something. Uh, but content range, so content range, First byte, zero base numeric index of the byte number from which you are resuming the upload. This is one number higher than the second number and the range header retrieved in the previous step, right? So if we uh, successfully uploaded the first million bytes, this is literally the example they're talking about here, um, then the range that we got in the status would be up to 999999. So the first byte that would be in the subsequent resumed upload would be 1 million. So this would be 1 million dash and then last byte. Let's spend the file. If the file size was three, uh, three million bytes, the last byte in the file would be 2999999. And then total content length is the total size of the video file, which we have in a, in a variable somewhere above that we could grab. You cannot upload a non-continuous block of the binary file. Okay, so you have to you have to pick up where you left off. You can't skip ahead. Okay, but um, that does tell me that the function that is going to be doing our upload will, if we just want to have one function that does this, we're going to need um, some input that's going to say it's like a cursor <laughs> of uh, information about where we're resuming the upload if we are. Um, so in the initial upload, we're not sending a content range. Content length we get for free, I think. I'm assuming that if we seek, hold on. Hey, Moody Abigail, thanks for the lurk. Hope your Sunday morning has been going good. Can we do like a file that seek? Into flush format read seek. Oh, that's some fun. I don't know what that's all about. Is that is that valid? Lies. Oh, I see. We need to uh, import the uh, trait to be able to see that. Cannot borrow file as mutable. It's not declared as mutable. Right, so now we're mutating file here. Um, Yeah, so we need to do like this. Does that break anything else? No, we can still, we can mutate the file and then when we give it to body, uh, file gets moved, but we don't, well, <laughs> once we start iterating, uh, that'll be a different story. I think what we'll probably have to do is move that, like take this code and move it into our upload function. Um, technically, like right now, this doesn't need to be here. This could be down here. Uh, I somehow failed to cut that. There we go. Like, this is fine, right? Because we don't use file in this block of code. Okay. So I'm getting an idea now of how I want to structure this. I'm gonna take out my hoodie though. Warm it up. Mm. So we're gonna have an upload function. 
an upload function um, that is going to take, uh, maybe we just pass in like where we want to start from. And if it's zero, then we know we don't need to send a content range header. If it's not zero, then we know we need to send a content range header, uh, but we're also going to seek on the file. And presumably what um, the request uh, client here is going to do is um, send a content link that represents the remaining bytes in the file after we've seeked to the position where we're going to resume from. Um, yeah, that seems all good to me. Uh, so for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a function and it's going to be an async, uh, a rank async function uh, upload. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to take some things, but I'm not going to worry too much. Uh, yeah, we can instrument it. Sure. Uh, and we're going to make a struct uh, enum. This is going to be, that's interesting. Ooh. Interesting, interesting. Uh, no, 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 we don't need that. What we need is, um, yeah, a YouTube upload error is, is kind of what I want here. It's kind of redundant though. We're in a crate called YouTube upload API. We'll just call it upload error. I'm assuming I don't have something called that already. Uh, so this is going to be actually maybe upload result. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, because so the, the thing that occurs to me, right, is that there is like a result type, uh, I guess it's an enum, available, right, that we could use that's either, uh, it's an enum that has either okay or error. But I think that is, it doesn't quite fit here because generally you do that because you, in the okay case, you want a result, like a value that you extract out of, like you match out of. In this case, we don't actually care about the result of the API call. We're calling it to do the upload. We don't need a result back uh, right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're gonna do like upload status, I think. Because this is, this is covering both like the success and error cases. But results or option, those um, generic types don't really make sense in this case, I think. So I have like a success case. Uh, nope. And we'll have a uh, temporary failure case. Yep, and then the permanent failure. There we go. So upload is going to return. Uh, an upload status. Like so. Uh, and what is it gonna take? What is it, what do we need? Um, we need a path of the file to upload. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this, I don't know. I don't know if this type is gonna be right. It's just what Copilot gave us. Um, what, what do we actually need? So the easiest way to like work that out is to grab the code that we know is going to need to be in the function, which is going to be like this bit here. Uh, and then, uh, we're going to do something like, um, for now, I'm just going to say, let response respond. S P O N equals match upload. Yeah. Dot await. Yep. Now this is this is all wrong. 
but that's fine. It's going to be wrong until we figure out exactly what we're doing. Uh, and then the code that I just cut is going to go down here and we're going to figure out how to manipulate it to be what we actually want to do. Uh, so we know that we need to like read the file at the path. Um, we, we do know that we need to seek to a location. Um, now there, there's ways we could design the, like the, the interface for this function, right? So like it's arguments, um, like we could use an option and things, uh, upload URL is something I think we do also need, right? To know where we're uploading to. And then, uh, content type, we could do fancy things where we like to figure out the content type from looking at the file, but it's not going to make sense to do here, right? Because we would be doing this on every reattempt, but the content type is hopefully not going to change. Um, we could take app state into here. I don't really want to do that. I think I would rather take the uh, access token, which is a secret string. And then the other bit we need is going to be the, um, start byte. We could call it. Hey, like that, right? And so now this is what we pass into here. Because presumably start takes a U64. That's an unsigned 64 bit integer. Um, and then we need to figure out what we're doing here, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna, um, oh, right. We need an HTTP client. So if we're not, if we're not passing in the whole state, um, from <laughs> what we have available, uh, we'll need to pass in the HTTP client because we want to use that already built HTTP client that might have some, uh, special stuff instrument into it, like, uh, an agent string and, and those things. Um, something like that. There we go. So that that's all good. Now we actually have to just like handle the different cases. So uh, here's a response. Okay. Case error case. Now this is wrong. Um, because this, uh, expression is going to evaluate to a result, uh, typed thing. Right, we're going to be able to match on it, or or rather, this expression, once we await it, is going to give us a result, which is either going to be an OK or an error. Uh, but we don't want to return this. We do want to trace, I think, the error that happened. Um, but we don't care about the actual response. And I, I think at this point, actually what we could do is actually return here, like return out of the function, um, except if, if we get a, oh no, right, right, no, 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 I don't want to do that like that. Actually, yeah, I want to return the response. It's if there's an error, then we need to figure out what kind of error it was. No, 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 no. If there's an error here, that's like a network error or a DNS error or something else that is for our purposes permanent, right? So here we want to return. Yeah, but not that. <laughs> we want to return um, upload status permanent failure. There you go. All right, and then we need another one of these. And yeah, so that was my temporary confusion there, right? Because it's, it's this error case here. That's going to be a permanent failure, but there are several cases inside of here and we could like, you could 
just have another block of code here and we could look at the response and do different things. And you could do that and like nest that logic and then you wouldn't need to store the response here. You just have this return out success or temporary failure or permanent failure. But um, I think it's gonna be easier to read if we're not nesting so much logic. All right, so here we've only nested one condition and everything else is going back to the main flow. And then what we wanna say is that if it's a success, oh, interesting, interesting. Is this actually valid? Are those actual real methods? Okay, but this is not the right logic um, because per the documentation, it's only these four specific status codes that we need to handle as temporary, not everything between 500 and 599. Um, I wonder what other methods do we have here in, stat in status? Uh, let's see. Yeah, equal. Sure. So like status returns the status code. So we could do like um, did I see uh, as you 16? <laughs> 308. Well, we'll be looking at that later when we get to the the um, resuming part. Is there a way? There's not like an in operator. Uh, there's that, right? Uh, technically, that can that can that work? Oh no, that's for loops. Aww. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> Rust. Check if number in set. How can I test if a value lies within a range? Uh, contains. or match. Ooh. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, no promotions are acceptable. Music is quiet. Let's fix that. It's always such a challenge to balance the audio levels. Now we use iflet. We use something. Tell this doesn't look right. Range pattern is deprecated. Use dot dot equals inclusive range instead. Interesting. Uh, we might try contains, right? So we can do something like, well, not 604, 504. Ooh, what is that? Is that, is that real? Nah. <laughs> uh, dot contains. Doesn't like that. Uh, found. Oops. Go back. Go back. Is this a? Is this a? Arguments. Oh, oh, right, right, right. So we need that. This needs to be integer again. Yeah, there you go. Um, expected reference. Consider borrowing here. Can we? Can we just borrow this? So two is not 
and three to five. Three is in three to five. Five is not in three to five. So this needs to be like this then. Right, because we want, oh, but it's not five, 501. Ah. Uh, can we, does this Vec, what? Does Vec have a contains? 500, 502, 503, and 504. Uh, is that not how? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. So far, so good. Uh, we have errors from the other th other thing that we've not updated yet, but yeah. Uh, and then, of course, this is wrong, right? Because we're, we're not trying to return some Axum status here. We do want to return, yeah, permanent failure. If we can't get the file, that's a pretty permanent failure. <laughs> within the concept, you know, within, when I'm saying permanent here, that just means within the like life cycle of user clicks upload button, asynchronous task goes and tries to upload it. We have a condition that the task itself is not gonna be able to solve. We need to give up and the user needs to do something else. All right, so we have an upload function and it might sort of work. We are missing a bit though. Um, one of the things that I want to do here, and, and we know that we need to do, next track, you know, when I say that the track should be just instrumentals, <laughs> anyway, um, right. So if we, if start byte is not zero, then we want to send a content range header. Uh, yeah, that's the logic. I mean, for that matter, we don't need to seek if it's zero as well. So we could like nest all that in there. If we're gonna do that, what we need to do is we need to have a mutable, um, um, a mutable request object. So we can add the header to so we'll say something like, uh, let mute request equals, yeah, something like that, right? It's content type and then authorization is the other bit. We'll definitely want. And then we should be able to like replace this part with that. Now it doesn't think, you don't need to be, it doesn't need to be mutable. Uh, and currently it doesn't, but it will, it will. <laughs> uh, if, yeah, start byte greater than zero. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and we'll do that and we'll do that as well, right? So if start byte is greater than zero, we're gonna send a content range and bytes and then uh, some things, <laughs> some things. Okay, so what do I need to do here? What do I need to do here? Hmm. Like we could read the size of the file again. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So last byte is just the total content. The total content length minus one. Right. If the file size was three million bytes, then the last byte would be two nine 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 nine. The total size of the video file. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. 
This approach is rarely necessary and is actually discouraged, so we're not, uh, we're not gonna bother reading it. <laughs> um, so along with content type, let's also pass in um, maybe maybe here file size. So we're going to pass in we're gonna do this, this, and then, so it's going to be start byte, and then it's going to be file size minus one. Yeah, and file size. All right, so this is the total number of bytes, and this is the last byte in the file, and this is where we're starting from. And then we're seeking to where we're starting from. Now it's going to be on the other function that we need to write to get this number by looking at the content range of the status response and adding one to it. Like if we upload up to something, then the next byte is where we start from. Uh, but I think otherwise this, this is right. We're going to attempt to upload the file and it's either going to succeed say it's successful or it's going to uh, fail due to like some kind of network error in which case it's a permanent failure or it's going to fail with one of these status codes in which case it's a temporary failure and otherwise it is a permanent failure there we go all right so there's our upload function so I think what we could do is really um, we can change this to basically have the same behavior it had before, but using our upload function, right? So how close is this? Uh, let's see. So what are the arguments supposed to be? Request client, the path, the start byte, which we're going to say is zero because we're not handling the recovery case yet. Uh, file size is content length, we already got. Upload URL, content type, access token. Uh, and then we just need to handle the different cases, right? So what we're going to say is, is if it's a success, then uh, we actually, yeah, we don't even need to store the results here, right? Uh, at least right now. What we're going to do is, is if it's the success, we'll just unit response. And then if it's a, um, if it's a permanent error or temporary failure, if it's a temporary failure, we're going to have this case. And then if it's a permanent failure, we're going to have the exact same case. Um, we don't need to do tracing here because the function itself is going to trace whatever the error was. Uh, and then I think, yeah, we'll do something like this. There you go. And then this goes away. We don't need to handle that anymore. We still need to, to do recover from field upload. Um, so the two returns just exit out the handler and return this response. And then the, the unit value here uh, does nothing. And so that allows us to get down here and we could do this. We could also instead, uh, we could change this, right? If we wanted to, we could move this into here um, and get rid of the semicolon and get rid of the returns and just have this evaluate into whatever the response value should be. That's not gonna make sense because of the next change we're going to make which is going to be to retry the upload. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of weird, right? Just returning the temporary failure and not saying how to recover, but given how the YouTube API works, where we have to make other API calls to figure out where to resume from, it makes sense that we don't need to have any data coming back from here since we're gonna have another function that's responsible for figuring that all out 
from the information we already have here. Um, I think what I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to rename this function to maybe like upload enter. Uh, where is, there we go. And, and this is kind of reflecting what I'm currently thinking, which is that we're going to, so we're gonna make that status uh, interrogation function. And then we're gonna make a wrapper function around both called upload that's gonna handle all the retry stuff. And then that's what we'll call from here. At which point, um, like that'll just have like, it'll succeed or it'll fail. Uh, so we'll probably just use like a result type maybe. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so we're gonna pause here though. I'm gonna take a quick break so I can get some water. And when we uh, resume, we'll finish this up and then probably shift over to working on some front end stuff to actually use all of this. All right, be back in just a few.